up, we have the Utah Jazz potentially exploring trades for uh, Donovan Mitchell, their all-star player, who doesn't seem to be a part of the timeline anymore. Um, they have flirted with the Knicks, uh, ridiculously asking for six round, first round picks. Uh, Obi Toppin, uh, Isaiah Quigley, I believe, and a, a couple other guys, but not R.J. Barrett from the Knicks, um, which is crazy to me. Um, Danny Ainge is trying to be a mastermind on his end, as he always tries to be. He got five first round picks from the Rudy Gobert trade that happened last week, which is expected. This is a team that's looking to rebuild and capitalize on their all star duo that they no longer fit their timeline, fit their uh, trajectory, um, and basically heading for a full rebuild. They already have the Spirit Airlines rebuild brand on with their jerseys. I, I, those jerseys are terrible. Utah, what are you doing? Um, I don't even know where it's from. I have to look up on <laughs> the history of that jersey and what their uh, 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 the story behind those jerseys is. Um, they have the mountain jerseys, which I always thought was fire, um, even though the Jazz and Utah don't go together. It's the, the Rocky Mountains on the jersey, whatever the case. But the colorway works. Who cares? This black and yellow colorway, I always wondered why a black and yellow colorway hasn't been in the NBA or introduced in the NBA. We saw it with the Lakers. uh I believe they're uh, Mamba uniform, I want to say. I don't, I'm not. I'm sorry, I'm not a Lakers fan. I don't know the name of that jersey. But that's the black and closest to black and yellow that we've seen in the NBA. But this one looks terrible. Spirit Airlines, uh, 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 Western Union uniforms that they have on, whatever the case may be. Well, let's get back to the trade here. Um, the Utah Jazz action price is ridiculous. I understand that they're trying to capitalize on Donovan Mitchell and basically – value Donovan Mitchell. Maybe this is a ploy by Danny Ainge to show, hey, we value you that much. We're willing to ask for more in a trade than Rudy Gobert. Maybe that's what it is. But if the Knicks agree to this in any sense of form, the Knicks are the worst franchise in sports at some point in the NBA. I, I don't care what Orlando's doing. I don't care what Sacramento Kings are doing. I don't care about the Clippers history. The New York Knicks, if they trade six first round picks for Donovan Mitchell, what are they doing as a franchise? What are they doing? This would be a dumb move by the Knicks. Now, if they say two to three, more understandable, a little still steep in my opinion in this trade here, especially maybe not axing for R.J. Barrett is making the Utah Jazz extend those uh, offers of the picks there, upping the ante there for the picks. But I just don't see this as a good move for the Knicks. Now, if they didn't go ahead and get Jalen Brunson last week for hundred and what four million dollars and do all that with from Dallas and and maybe there's tampering in there or something like that to that extent, um, but to pair Jalen Brunson, who's a small guard, and Donovan Mitchell, who's also a small guard, and both guys who need the ball in their hands, we've seen this before in Portland with Dame Lillard and C.J. McCollum. Why would New York do this? I understand. Why would you do this to be a 42 to 44 win team possibly and maybe get a 51 season like Carmelo Anthony did with the Knicks um, a couple years ago, uh, almost a decade ago? I understand you wanting to build talent and build a different type of field to New York because New York has been terrible um, and has been uh, in a state of turbulence over the past two decades. I understand that. But this is just another Knicks move in their history to show that they don't know what they're doing. Bringing in Jalen Brunson and Donovan Mitchell, a miniature backcourt, where you're not going to play any defense there. Julius Randle's already hating the touches he gets, uh, 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 the, the arguing with the fans there. So how are you going to bring that there to New York with Donovan Mitchell and Jalen Brunson there? And... Continue to derail this franchise, in my opinion. I don't think that's a smart move for the Knicks. I think it's a great, smart asking ploy from the Utah Jazz and Danny Ainge. That's smart. You just want to create as many assets as you want. And you're looking to create trades there with teams that potentially could flop. Um, Minnesota can potentially flop. Those five first-round picks look favorable to the Utah Jazz. So that's understandable to make that trade. For the Knicks to make this trade, I don't see where it's working both ways here. Yes, they get Donovan Mitchell. Yes, they improve their team. And I'm not saying Donovan Mitchell's not a great player, not a good player in the league. I like Donovan Mitchell. I think he's a, a, a solid guard in this league who can really fill up the stat sheet, especially scoring-wise. Um, but to sit there and give up six, six first-round picks, similar to what I think the Clippers did to get Paul George, 
I just don't think that's a smart move, especially in this day and age in the NBA where picks are valuable, not only in the draft, but in potential trades down the line for your team. And to give up that many assets, especially, I, I just don't think that's a smart move for the Knicks. I think what they should do is decline this trade, probably try to get down the picks to two or three and work it from there. Maybe try to include the Mitchell Robinson, whatever the case may be. Figure out something to ease the burden there in that trade there. Yes, you get Donovan Mitchell, you get an all-star player. Yes, I understand his father played baseball. I believe he played with the Mets. That's why he's always at Mets games and stuff like that. But to give up the house for Donovan Mitchell, who I don't even think they made a Western Conference Finals. To do that, it's just crazy. At least when Paul George got traded all those bunch of times, he made the Eastern Conference Finals. He's in last year he made the Western Conference Finals. Does that pay for the Clippers? I don't know. But to give up that many draft picks, I just don't think it's a smart move for them. I just don't like that move for the Knicks at all. And I hate the Knicks. I don't like the Knicks. I don't care for the Knicks. But for them to do that is just negligence on their part. I just don't think that's a smart move for them. And especially let's think of that Tibbs is the coach. Tibbs doesn't have a great offensive resume outside of Derrick Rose in those MVP years that we saw from him in those early years of Derrick Rose, which were awesome. I understand that. But his offense over the past couple years in Minnesota, uh, in New York past year, it looks putrid. So to bring Donovan Mitchell and Jalen Brunson in and just think, hey, our offense is going to be better. Yes, it's going to be better. But at what cost? Are the adjustments going to be made at the necessary times to satisfy all these players, Jalen Brunson, uh, Evan Fournier, Isaiah Quigley, Obi Toppin, uh, uh, Julius Randle especially, who has been uh, uh, disgruntled there. So how are these moves going to work for the Knicks? And you're just going to, hey, we're just going to get a couple of stars and just make the playoffs and be a first-round exit. Is that what you want if you're New York? Aren't you trying to change the culture? Aren't you trying to be better? That would just be a dumb move for the Knicks. I'm sorry, six first-round picks. For Donovan Mitchell is not a good trade in any sense. In any team, uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, that's just not a good trade. Not at all. I don't think that's what they should do. Um, if anything, I think they should just go forward with their team. You got Jalen Brunson. You got Julius Randle. And try to figure it out from there. If you're going to trade for, for Donovan Mitchell, get a better package deal, please. Get a third team involved where you can get somebody else to come in and, and, and take some bad salaries or whatever the case may be. But do not take six first round picks and give them to the Utah Jazz who are rebuilding and your team who will will not be structured right, especially with Tibbs as coach, especially with the New York crowd and fan base. They're not going to like that. So to sit there and just continuously be a 40 to 44 win team, I don't think that's the move for the Knicks. And I think they need to find a way. Danny Ainge is up to tricks again. And he's showing it right now.